Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Aimstone channel. And of course, as always, let's go ahead and start this video with Bitcoin market. As of the time of this recording, BTC is slightly below $43,000. It seems like in the last couple of days, Bitcoin has been fluctuating between 42 and 43K. I really hope to see when BTC will break 44K. I think that would be a really great sign that more past momentum is on the way. But even if it doesn't break a 44K today or tomorrow, I think BTC still has a great future in the next couple of weeks. So yes guys, keep stacking sets. I wish I could keep stacking sets more, but unfortunately right now I do not have any disposable income because since 2022 bear market, my income from YouTube has been literally crashed. I think right now I make um, probably like 20, 30% whatever I was making um, uh, back uh, in like 2020, 2021. Look, I hope when Bitcoin bull market will really kick in, I will make more money otherwise I will have to go back to corporate job and I do not want to do that but anyway guys let's move on and take a look at this weekly Bitcoin chart of course in this black color we have 50 days moving average and in this red color we have 200 days simple moving average and whenever 50 days moving average crosses about 200 days moving average it represents a golden cross that's exactly what happened a few days ago just recently on the flip side, whenever 50 days moving average crosses below 200 days moving average, it represents a dead cross. And that's what we saw in the beginning of 2023. Well, it was not that uh, deadly at all. Personally, I'm not a big fan of indicators, but many traders swear in these indicators and they probably go long or continue like buying in few chunks in BTC at this current moment. I am just a uh, dollar cost averaging stacking sets for long term and I think that is the right approach. But anyway guys, let's zoom out a bit and take a look actually if we saw some historical patterns. Well back in 2016, 50 days moving average approach to uh, 200 days moving average but it never broke below it. But whenever that approach, since that point on BTC went into that massive bull market where Bitcoin went literally from like 200 bucks all the way to $20,000. And then 2021, yes, they kind of converge, but they never touch each other. And now for the first time ever, 50 days moving average broke below 200 days moving average. And now it broke about it just recently, which is indeed quite bullish indicator. Moving on, Bitcoin fear grid index. Today we had grid, we had 63. Actually, we had the same level where we were back yesterday. Well, to be honest, I think grid would be a bit overstretched. I would say we would be more or less in neutral. Whenever Bitcoin breaks like 44k, I think this is the time when we will be in greed indeed. Alright guys, moving on. Argentina eliminates all taxes on Bitcoin. Yes, current Argentinian president definitely knows what he is doing. On top of that, he fired like 50,000 corrupt politicians in Argentina parliament. So yes, I wish we could have a president like this. Maybe I should just go and live in Argentina. Unfortunately, if you are U.S. citizens, it does not matter where you live in the world, you will still have to pay U.S. taxes, which is just a bunch of BS. And to announce your U.S. citizenship, you will have to pay a shit load of money. Sometimes I just regret getting United States citizenship in the first place. But anyway, guys, let's move on. Exactly two years ago, Facebook failed crypto stablecoin Libra was officially shut down and sold. <laughs> Who the hell it was sold to? It was a failed project. Today, its former project and lead pledged to devote his entire life to Bitcoin and Lightning Network. Well, good job. Maybe in the next couple of years, Facebook will adopt Bitcoin. Personally, I don't think it's going to happen because they have a shed lot of regulatory issues, but maybe it would. All right, moving on, moving to Bitcoin spot ETFs. Breaking BlackRock's IBIT Bitcoin ETF has passed GBTC as the largest buy volume on Wall Street. Yes, I remember before, actually after Bitcoin spot ETF has been launched, a Sun and Shine CEO of, of Grayscale has been saying that, oh, we can charge 1.5% asset under management fees, the highest fees ever, even the higher like five, six times considering to their competitors because we have high volume and we have history. <laughs> now, now you have what? Now BlackRock surpass your volume. And yes, BlackRock has way more history than you do. Maybe you have some history in Bitcoin, but overall BlackRock has history in um, 
legacy finance and yes of course they know what they're doing with bitcoin spot etfs so uh, look man those greedy scumbags in grayscale they just want you to take your money and yes do not buy grayscale buy ibit instead moving on guys just in spot bitcoin tfs now holds over three percent of the current bitcoin circulating supply not bad in fact let me break down everything for you yes current btc circulating supply is slightly below 20 million so make a math simpler um 10 percent of 20 million that will be a 2 million five percent will be a 1 million and the one percent would be two hundred thousand BTC. So as we can see, Grayscale alone holds more than four hundred eighty-seven thousand BTC. That would be slightly less than three percent. If you take um, BlackRock, Fidelity, and all other Bitcoin spot ETF issuers plus Grayscale, we would get maybe three point five percent of total Bitcoin circulating supply. If we can add MicroStrategy on top of that, MicroStrategy alone owns more than 189,000 BTC that would be slightly less than one percent so if we combine all these public companies together they would hold like four four point five percent of all BTC in circulation which is not bad indeed in fact let's take a look at this table and what happened yesterday regarding Bitcoin spot ETF inflow outflow so on February 1st as we can see uh, grayscale 182 million worth of BTC left grayscale which will be the lowest days of outflow since day one. Yes, day one, it was 95 million. And then the second lowest will be 8, 182 million, which is, as we can see, the selling pressure is coming to the end. And then on the flip side, we have a BlackRock. They added additional $163 million worth of uh, Bitcoin. And then we have Fidelity, not that much, only at 35 million. However, altogether, yesterday we have a positive flows of $38 million. And as we can see, the total outflows for Grayscale would be more than $5.8 billion. It's approaching $6 billion. Yes, good job, Grayscale, fucking up with all your damn fees. However, uh, the total net flows will be $1.4 billion. So despite Grayscale continue selling, right now the total flow is positive, which is really good all right guys let's move on how new bitcoin tfs affect the bitcoin price let's take a look when investors buy or sell bitcoin on centralized exchanges like coinbase or binance each trade directly affects the bitcoin's price with the exchange order book matching buyers with sellers 24 7. the displayed bitcoin price is the average of what buyers are willing to pay and what sellers are prepared to receive for their bitcoin therefore whether the investors buy ten dollars or one thousand dollars worth of bitcoin on exchange directly impacts the price in real time however when it comes to bitcoin ETFs, things get more complicated while the new spot Bitcoin TFs are designed to track the Bitcoin price directly, they do not impact it is in some way. Buying the shares of an ETF has no real-time impact on Bitcoin's price through the direct means. In fact, the Bitcoin represented by shares is not even purchased until the next trading days. So the main difference buying Bitcoin spot ETF or buying BTC on cryptocurrency exchanges is just whenever you buy Bitcoin spot ETF is being delayed by one day because yes, it does make sense because let's say that I want to buy a BlackRock shares, then I buy BlackRock shares, then the following day BlackRock buys real Bitcoin on my behalf and they cost the that BTC. And the same story whenever I want to sell Bitcoin, that will be one day delay. So yesterday when we had like more than 40 million a positive flow so today it seems like it's going to impact bitcoin price and btc price should be actually positive because of that uh, math all right guys let's change gear a bit take a look at some interesting bitcoin charts this first chart represents a bitcoin realized price a realized price is basically represents all accumulated prices that people pay for their btc historically and right now the realized price is twenty two thousand dollars which actually represents average price that people paid for 22k personally my realized price would be way lower than that i think my average price would be like around ten thousand dollars yes first time i bought btc was in mid 2017 it think i think it was like uh, 5k and then um and then i did not buy the top because i don't have money and then uh, next time i was buying btc was 2019 I remember very vividly I bought BTC at around 4k I think I bought maybe like two three BTC not sure and then yes 
I uh, was out of the money again. I was keep working, accumulated cash, and then the next time I was buying Bitcoin was in 2020 during the Corona crash. I think I bought maybe like four or five thousand dollars, and then I bought a couple of BTC for like ten thousand dollars. Whenever um, Michael Saylor bought in August 2020, and then whenever Bitcoin skyrocketed, I did not buy anything and the uh, the same thing happened during the bear market. I did not buy much because during that time uh, my YouTube literally crashed and I did not have disposable income. But look, whenever real Bitcoin bull market kicks in, I will probably like dollar cost average into BTC at whatever price BTC is going to be. And lastly, let's take a look at this quick video where Kerry Clipstone, CEO of Swan Bitcoin, will explain why Bitcoin no longer will have diminishing rate of returns. Let's take a look. So you were predicting that Bitcoin would retrace by about 30-40%. Uh, how much further do you think uh, it will correct from the point we are now? The only signal that I'm seeing right now that matters is the flows into the non-GBTC ETFs. So the new the new ETF vehicles that, that didn't exist. GBTC has had absolutely massive selling because there are a bunch of these bankruptcy estates that are selling GBTC now that the discount to net asset value has closed to near zero. Uh, there's just a ton of selling going on uh, out of GBTC. Uh, we, we all learned that the FTX bankruptcy sold a billion dollars worth of, of GBTC over a few days, for instance. So I think it's just kind of inevitable that that was going to happen. I actually think that the amount that it's fallen is amazingly small given the amount of selling that's been going on. And I think that is a credit to not just the flows going into the new ETFs, but what I've been talking about is a an ETF multiplier effect. And basically this is because of the existence of the ETFs and the credibility of these large financial firms getting into the space and validating it in the eyes of, of investors that haven't played the game previously, a lot more Bitcoin will be purchased through all of the other sellers around the world, whether it's Swan, whether it's Coinbase, whether it's you know Relay over in Europe or, or OTC desks, or even private funds from Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. So there's a lot more Bitcoin flows or, or money flowing into Bitcoin incremental to what otherwise would have because of the existence of the ETS. So it's their marketing and their stamp of approval that frankly is much more important than and and frankly a lot larger magnitude of flow into Bitcoin than than just what's flowing into the ETFs. You said that in this specific market cycle, Bitcoin is likely to break the pattern of diminishing returns that we have been seeing throughout uh, the latest uh, few cycles. So why exactly do you think that uh, this pattern will be broken this time? Yeah, so I think it's inevitable. And I apologize if I, I did this math live last time. I can't remember if I did. But the, the, the trough to peak up to the top of 2013 was $2 to 1100 So it was 550x. The trough to peak up to 2017 was 180 bucks up to 19,700 which interestingly was exactly 20% of that it was 110x so from 550x to 110x amazingly it it continued to be geometric into 2021 so trough to peak in 2021 was from 3150 to 68800 or 69000 or whatever it was literally 22x Another twenty per, or another eighty percent reduction in in the rise. So from five fifty to one ten to twenty two. When I say that we're going to break that cycle of sort of these these geometric returns, it's because from the bottom of around sixteen k, if you went to four point four, that would only be seventy k. And I obviously don't expect seventy k to be the uh, the high of this next bull run. I think it'll be significantly higher than that. So I think that cycle of sort of geometrically diminishing returns is going to break um you know this year or next year for sure look i think i definitely agree what he said yes in the first cycle from the bottom all the way to the top btc made 500x and then the second cycle from the bottom all the way to the top btc made 20 percent of the uh, previous one which would be only 100x and then we saw another 20 percent following cycle uh, that would be 2019 where bitcoin went from like 3k all the way to 69 thousand dollars 
and that would be actually 20% of the previous cycle, which would be only 20x. So yes, uh, 20, 20, Bitcoin was the bottom at $17,000. So 20% of the uh, 2021 uh, bull market, that would be only 4x. So 4x would only would be to see price at around $70,000. And no, I do not think $70,000 would be the top this time around, considering the fact how many catalysts we currently have. No, this is not going to happen. I think $70,000 is just the bare minimum. I would not be surprised if it would be like 300, 400K, but I am hoping for $300,000 at least. Let me know what do you guys think. Comment below, subscribe, and like this video.